So, so we see that, that God will always add. He is the one that adds, right? We must remember he is the one that adds. He is the one that will bring in the next person. And it might be that that next person that he brings in is a person that will do what you were supposed to do. Right? That is why, while you are sitting here, and while you are at your home, that you lay before God and say, where do I fit in? You know, there's people that go right through their lives and not realize what they are supposed to do. If you go to the, to the graveyard, at Miles Monroe has said, the graveyard is the richest place in the world. And there are millionaires, there are people who have made things that they have that nooit gebruik gemaak het van die geleentede wat hulle gehad het. Want hulle het dit wat die Heere in hulle hande geplaas het, nie gebruik het. God has given each one of you a gift. No matter how small that gift is, that is your gift. And as you work with that gift, God will expand it. Little becomes much if you place it in the master's hand. So, so don't discount yourself. Don't place yourself in a corner. Don't sit yourself back and say, I have got nothing to offer. Even if it is that you just have to sweep the floors. Don't mind it. God will see you there. He will lift you up. Promotion doesn't come from the east, nor from the west. It comes from the Lord. And the reason why the church is in the state that it is in, it's because people are just looking to each other. They never go to the mirror and look to the person in the mirror. Het die geweet, daar is iemand in die mirror. There is a person in the mirror. <clears throat> and sometimes you have to speak to that man in the mirror. You have to tell him, pull up your socks. Jy sal vir jouself moet recht kree. Because it is important that as God is adding, as God is multiplying, as God is breaking forth, because every day God is breaking out boundaries and shifting and bringing new people in. And the reason is because there is enough that is equipped to do the work. When the church grows, it grows because God see that there's enough meat in the house. Right? God, uh, the Jerez must be so, the clear little men, so not it? Oz maak mos kinders, al kan ons hulle nie voor hy. Maar wanneer die Jere bijvoeg, dan voeg hy by, omdat hy weet, daar is genoeg om te kan voorzien. Right. The next thing that we have to realize and know, that God's plan was always a man. Right? God is not going to do anything in the earth except that he use a man. God is not going to use an angel Die Heere gaan altyd een mens gebruik. Dit is ook om hy vir ons daar hier geplaas het. God will do nothing on the earth except he do it through a man. And it's not that you have to worship the man. 
But you have to acknowledge the mantle of God on the man. As was done. Right? Altijd, wanneer die Heere iets wil doen in die aarde, gaan hy een mens gebruik. Right? Hy het hy rond ook opgedeerte. Right? Wat miskien leerlijker lyk as jy. God gaan altijd, we will always use a man. His plan in the earth will always be fulfilled through a man. And if you acknowledge that man, God will bless you. I'm taking this very slowly. I want it to sink in. I want you to understand it. Ons, ons, ons kom van verskillende achtergronde af, as vers, ek gaan nie eers name van kerke noem, waarvan heb jy miskien maar kom nie, maar daar is ons sommige kerke, waar hulle al die pastore dood maak, en ons dink ons weet meer, en ons weet beter as die jyre, en ons respecteer geen pastorie, ons respecteer geen man wat voorstaan nie, ons dink ons weet alles, en daarom bly jy net waar jy is, omdat jy nie kan respecteer nie, omdat jy nie kan vir jouself verneder nie. Verneder jou dan onder die krachtdadige hand van die Heere en hy sal jou verhoog. En die Heere sal altyd een man voor jou sit van wie jy nie hou nie. Het is net soos die heren gemaakt, hy geef jou pa en ma van wie jy nie hou nie. Heren het een funny way om goed te doen, he. Hy laat jou geboren word in een huis waar hy jou abuse, jou slang, jou skop, jou trap, But when he, when he does these things, it, is, it has nothing to do with the leader. It has nothing to do with your mother and father. It has nothing to do with your boss. It has nothing to do with your teacher. That it looks with niemand van hulle te doen. It has to do with you. He brings those people in your life for your sake. It is never about them. It is never about them. Hence, if you can, if you can take what they are doing in your life and how they are working for God in you to form character in you, to build you, to make you strong enough. Want niemand ken jou toekomstie behalwe die Heere, en nou vorm hy jou hier, so dat hy jou daar kan gebruik. Because he knows your tomorrow. So laat hy jou trap, as jy getrap moet word. Do we understand? Do we understand? So, so, so these are these are very important things because because you you know what God is busy doing? He's busy forming you. He's busy transforming you. He's busy to working in you, and and it seems like nobody is seeing your side. And niemand staan aan my kant nie. No, because God is busy at work. He is working in you to form you, to fit into the body of Christ. 
en as ons die toets staan, dan sal ons die kroon beerwe. But now the, the, the writer also said, let no one when he is persecuted say I am persecuted by God. Laat niemand sê as hy versoek word, of as iets moeilik met hom gebeur, laat niemand sê dit is die Heere nie. Maar dat allemaal aanvaar, dat die Heere werk, op verskillende maniere, met verskillende mense. This is, this is scripture, and, and that was not part of the notes, but I want you to put it on the board. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, and I want to show you something on that scripture, and then we're going to go, um, and we have got a few minutes, we, we're going to go further on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse, 10, verse 13, that's it, right. <clears throat> Have, have, have someone got an elastic band for me? A, a rubber band? A, a elastic. Vrouw ons draam ons soem en die goed is die oor aan die haar en een pom pom of a ding. But in any case, if we don't, it's, it's fine also. Now, if we read that scripture, it says, o ja, ek het moest brille, nie. Want ek, ek kan nou niks sien wat die staan nie, man. All right. Thank you. Uh, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken us, except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, every rubber band is made with a limit. Right? This rubber band can only stretch thus far. And if I am strong enough and I pull it harder, it will get to a place where it can break. Now the, the scripture says, God knows what your limit is. And God will not, can you see there? He will not allow you to be stretched further than you can go. This. And here's the, here's the lesson. Have you heard how many times people are, say, are, are saying, Ja, maar ek, ek, ek kan nie meer die ding vat nie. Het jy, ge, het, het jy al gehoor hoeveel keer mense sê, maar dit is te zwaar vir my om te it means God has got more faith in you than you got in yourself. He will not allow you to go through something that you, God knows what you can carry. He knows what you can bear. He knows how far you can go. And he knows what is your limitations. And he says that if it goes too far, he will see that there is a way of escape for you. If the elastic band is stretched too far, God will allow the elastic band to come back. So when you are in a situation, wherever it might be, if God wants you in that situation, bear it, go through it, because on the other end 
of that stretching, it's God's blessing for you. He won't let you break down. He won't allow you to break down. But he will always see that you have a way of escape. I want to now turn our focus back to what we are talking about, and that is the Christ, which according to my interpretation, or according to what the scriptures have shown to us, it could only be the body of Christ. The church is called many things, but when we look at the scripture, it's called the ecclesia, the ones that is taken out, the ones that is brought out, uh, brought out 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 of various situations, out of various places, out of various circumstances, and God has called people, and so God will call people from everywhere. Hun akkoord kan ons sien hoe die Heere verskillende mense hier gaan bring. Different people. We're going to have people from different colors. We are going to have people from different nationalities. We're going to have people from different countries that will be added but the people that God will add will be here because God has seen us as a people that have learned how to accommodate others. You see, so what will come in that door is how we have opened our hearts to accept what God is doing. You see, if I cannot accept the brother that sit next to me, the sister that sit behind me, the brother that is doing something different that I'm doing or is not like me, if I cannot accept that, God will never allow more to come. God first have to sort me out so that I can have. That is the same with my money. You see, as it may help most, Gaan die Heere nooit vir my een miljoenier maak. Oh, jy kan maar droom. But if I cannot organize as how to work with my money, God will never give me more. Die goestel is hulle nou. (laughs) Jy sien, ek kan maar maar confessions en al die goeders doen, but I have to be a responsible steward of what God is giving me. Hey, you can see how many people who die not give the will so graag rijk wees. But I can't eerst 10% for the Heere give nie. I don't know what you want with 90% You understand? So as we learn to accommodate each other, God will open up more and more space for men to come. And he will bring in people with different kind of of expertise and, 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 and who can bless us in a different way who can open up more doors for us. You see, ons moet nie, ons moet nie kerk sien, net as ons ou klein groepie, hier by mekaar, ons verstaan op mekaar daarom, so, ons is all right nie. Ons is allemaal oké okay nie. Church was never supposed to be that. Church was a place where we can be a community, a communion of people, a people that can live together. That's why 
um, they, they, they actually said it was more or less three and a half million people that came out of Egypt. And, and the Bible actually says that there were other people also that came with them that wasn't Jew, Jews. Because they saw in the life of these people that they were a people that lived for each other. They were a people that cared for each other. And so it has some other people that came to us. And they had also come to us with the Rooi See with the met die jode en, en hulle het ook die groot wonderwerke wat die Heere gedoen het, gesien gebeur. Now God want us to be that community of people. We are the Christ. We are that spiritual people. We must never forget that. We are not a natural people. Nothing that we have to do or nothing that we are doing must ever be seen in the natural. We must, we must transform out of the natural into the spiritual because we are a spiritual people. There are lessons. Obviously, we know that the scriptures is very clear <clears throat> that there are lessons to be learned from the Old Testament. And those lessons are so important because they can form some pillars for us where we can build on, what we can look through and to, and, and, and how we can build our lives. That's why God had a natural people. That's why God created for us a natural people. He created us a natural people so that we can see how we can live a spiritual life through what he has built in the natural. Now in the natural, God showed throughout the Old Testament, God always showed that he has a man, always. There was one man that God chose and he placed people around that man. That man has the vision. That man heard from God. That man, God spoke to him. Remember when God spoke to Moses and Moses' sister and brother decided that the Yerah Praat was not with Joe, not with Jayan. Yerah Praat was with me too. They say also, no? Huh? Ons say also, no? Die Heere praat hem ons nie net met Apostel Werner, die waas, hy. Die Heere praat hem met my ook. And then God did something very significant. He brought them out. He called them out. And God strike them. And the thing that covered Aaron was the mantle of God on his life. And God will strike you. That was in the natural. I've, I, uh, Mariam had uitgeslaan met sire, met my laadseid, ne? Mariam had uitgeslaan met my laadseid, met sire, en, en dit wil jy sê, jy gaan so syk word, he. maar hy gaan geestelike terugsla met jou gebeur, dat jy nie vorder nie. Jy sien net niks dieren gaan vir jou oopie. Jy sien net niks gebeur rondom jou, wat vir jou voorspoed bring nie. En jy kan net nie jou vinger le op hoekom die dinge net nie vir my gebeur nie. Want jy staan tegen die man van die Heere op. En baie kere gebeur hier die goed saam met ons en ons verstaan nie die geestel, ons is in die geestelike realm mense. Die gevaarlikste ding wat jy gedoen het is om in die huis van die Heere te kom. Jy dink is gevaarlik daar buiten gaan? Jy! Dit is een robbe plek die. Die is een gevaar, jy! Die is een robbe plek die. Ek kan nou nou destijds so as nou jong was, ek was op ons gangsterkie en so aan die rondte gehad loop. 
Ons het altyd vir mekaar gesê, hoor jy, ons gaan morgen net hier by die kerkie hoor. Los die kerk af. Dit is een gevaarlijke plek. Huh? Ja? Ja? So, 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 we, 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 sometimes we don't realize. It's a very dangerous place. That's why I have to live a very pure and holy life. I have to adhere to the, to the statutes, to the commandments. Ek, ek moet, ek moet so nou gesit wandel. Okay, so, so, that is what happened to her. And the thing, as I said, the thing that covered Aaron was the fact that God has ordained him to be a high priest. And that saved him from not being leprous. Now, if God has done that, and as I said, that was done naturally. Die mense het gesien en so aan. Maar goed gebeur binnen jou leven, geestelik. En niemand sien het nie. Maar jy kooi nou weg. Jy gaan achteruit. And so, God has done various things in the Old Testament. We are going to look at the, at the house of David. Because I, I think it is so important that we realize, and, and I want us to have two scriptures. Um, the first scripture that we are going to look at, all right. The first scripture that we are going to look at is Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Amos Chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. There are some times that, that you, that one is just sidetracked by some things that you believe God wants you to focus on. And then verloor jy eindelijk, dan verloor jy eindelijk baie tyd. Maar oké, okay. dit kom saam met die Now there's a, there's a prophecy by the prophet Amos and the prophecy is in that day I will restore the fallen um, uh, or oh, let me write, uh, read it in the New King James Version. On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David which was fallen down and repaired its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. Verse 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing. Now, it is, it is interesting that right in the Old Testament, God was pointing. God was pointing to this new thing that he wants to do. Now remember, always in the Old Testament, no Gentile can associate with the children of Israel. But the prophet said that God will restore the house of David so that the house of David can accommodate Gentiles. Right in front and in the hearing of the people. Because what you must remember that when the prophet spoke, he spoke it in the hearing of the people. These words was spoken in the hearing of the people. The people know Gentiles are not allowed. But here stood Amos and he said, there is a day coming, says the Lord, that I'm gonna restore the fallen house of David. 
it means that the house of David will fall. But there will be a day when God, because of his, because of his promise to David, remember what God promises David. He promised David that there will always be someone that sits on the throne that will be from the house of David because of the heart that David had for God. Remember? But we know also, uh, God said to David, but if your sons disobey me, I will, I will, I will throw them off and I will, I will scatter the, your, your, your seed. But God will always remember his promise to David. And because of his promise to David, he will, he will foresee a day when there will be a renewal of the house of David. And that renewal of the house of David is the house of God, which is the body of Christ. Acts chapter 15. Verse 14 to 17. Acts chapter 15, verse 14. Now, James is the one that's speaking here. Uh, James, the apostle. And he's speaking to his listeners in, in the conference. You know, that all day to conference go. Was was the no yes to come conference. And thank you so wonderful. All right. That all day to conference go. All right. All right, and in the conference, this man stood and he, he said, and, and, and also remember, uh, when he spoke, he spoke to a predominantly Jewish crowd again, right? He is he's speaking to the Jews and he is saying to the Jews this thing, Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. And I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. And they realize that God is busy building something new in the earth. But this building that God is building, now the Egvia does clomp means. And and come and say for you, I could next year you at some means in it. There's nothing against the Jews in my heart. They are brothers if they accept Jesus Christ. Now they are people that are saying that we cannot discount the Jews. But as we read the scriptures, every Jew that wants to be part of this thing must, to, must be part of the church. Because the church is the new house of David. Now, 
Oké. Okay. Ik ga afdwaal. Ik ga afdwaal. Let's go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. I, I <clears throat> I'm sorry to bring you something else. Let's go to Galatians 4, verse 21. Now, now again, let me, let me say to, to you this. We have to, there is, there is, <laughs> um, there is this um, tendency that we want to revert back to Jewish traditions and orders and things. And, and, and sometimes, some of them are very good because out of them we can learn quite a lot. That's why you will hear me speak quite a lot about the Old Testament because I believe you cannot understand the New Testament unless you understand the Old Testament. There is so much locked up in there and the things in the New Testament is just spiritual things for what is happening in the natural in the Old Testament. So that is very important. But uh, I want to, I want to uh, uh, talk to you about this thing uh, because, because it's very important that we understand. Okay, now it says, tell me, you desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abram had Two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a. Now, now we must. Oh, oh, was it must amal begrip stuts gaat op school, ne? right? Begrip stuts, comprehension, right? We all had that. So um, we must we must comprehend what we are reading. All right. So so there were two sons. The one was from a slave. What was the slave's name? Agar. And the one was from the real woman whose name was? Sarah. Okay, now, <clears throat> okay, the scripture is also going to tell us that. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the? And he of the free woman through the? Ek hoop u weet want ons gaan. All right. Which things are, there's that word symbolic. You remember we discussed symbolic right at the beginning when we started off. Parable. Okay. For these are the two covenants, that is the two laws. One from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and correspond to Elias, who is Kirk here now? It corresponds to Jerusalem, which, which now is Wat het Jerusalem praat ons nou van? Die een wat nou daar sit in die ooste. Is ons daar? Jy lees het moes as in die Bijbel. Moet nie bang wees om te antwoord nie. Right? So the Jerusalem in the east is in? Is in bondage. Nou, baie christene hart loop Jerusalem toe. Ons, ons, ek meen... Is ek maar goed, is, is lekker om een toer te het, soon toe. Maar, oké, okay. um, right. <coughs> Wat maak die man nou weer vanavond met ons? Oké, okay. right. <coughs> um, which, uh, 
Its correspond, which now is, as in, and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us. So there's another Jerusalem. Not that one. We are after another Jerusalem. We are not after, because that one there is in. Okay, let us read on. Let me verstaan jylle of glo jylle my nie. Um, okay, but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you are not in labor, for, this, for the desolation has, has many more children than she who has a husband. Now, here's the thing. I think what we need to understand and what Paul is also trying to get us clear on, that God is building a new nation. That new nation is totally separated from the natural Israel. I've got nothing against you if you go to Jerusalem. There's a lot of things to see. I was there. This, this, this. But we cannot any longer promote her because there is a better Jerusalem that we are after. Right? There is a better Jerusalem that we are awaiting. There is a Jerusalem that is of God which is the spiritual place for the spiritual people, which is us. And we are supposed to inherit that place more and promote that place more than we promote the Jerusalem in the East. Our time is up. No dreaming. <laughs> okay, so so and as we are on this on this journey, we have to understand that God is at work to bring us in our paradigms and answer denker. Romans chapter twelve verse one. And two, Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, bef I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a loving sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, we know that sacrifices are not living. Right? Sacrifices are not living. Sacrifices are killed. Right? Sacrifices are supposed to be dead. But this place requires a living sacrifice. Ek het al baie kere gehoor hoeveel geloofig is sê, jyna is die heren, kan die heren toch nie maar kom nie. Jy gaan lang weg. Jy gaan lang weg. I'm serious. You're gonna wait very long. Jy gaan al wit bene wees. Jy, 
Uh, ek weet, uh, I mean, you see, the, the Pentecostal season has, has pictured, has, has drawn a picture to us and, and say to us soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. And it's not true. It's not true. If, if, if Jesus has to return tomorrow, who will go? Who comes to your hand, Topi? Right? Because you, you understand what we're saying. The church is not on its place. The church is not supposed to where it is. God is not coming for a dilapidated church. God will not turn up to be mocked. We are not where we're supposed to be. There's still a lot to be done. We have to be living sacrifices. We have to be willing to be martyred. And, Ek sê vir jou, dit is makkelijk om het te sê. Want daar gebeur niks rondom jou nie. Dat is van ons, wat in sak en as gaan le, as ek net die stukje brood gehad het nie. En dan sê ek, ek is in persecution. Dy weet niks. We have to be a living sacrifice. And then it says something else. It says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. You know what that means? You know what holy means? Set apart only for God. Hoeveel van ons is net op een zondag voor God? En die week is ons moes hassel is. En die week doen ons net wat ons wil. Net so lang ons een stukje brood op die tafel kan sit. Ek steel hier en ek kroek daar en ek maak net wat ek wil. Stel die baas het tyd ook. Ja, maar hou ek vir my heilig en sê ek, ek het gaan bid. Of ek het gaan bybel lees. Maar ek het die baas het tyd gesteel. We must be better. Better in the working place. We must be better workers. We must be the top class. As mense vir jou aangeneem het by hulle job, dan moet hulle vir jou kan vraag, is daar nie nog mense soos jy nie? Hulle moet nie dink, wanneer kan ek van hom ontsla raak? Huh? Holy sacrifices. Totally given for God. Totally surrendering everything to him. Then it goes on and says, let us go vinnig dier die ding kom. Then it goes on to say, uh, acceptable to God. Now, now this is very important. He said, you must be a sacrifice, living, and you must be a holy, and you must be acceptable. Now, a gebrekkige, offer, kan nie accept word nie. Ek kan nie van my een tiende een tien rand achterhou nie. Dan is het nie een tiende nie, dan is het een offering.
soos daar. Right? As ek nie die hele tiende gee nie, het ek hier die tiende gegeen nie. Ek kan skryf tiende. Wat is die tiende nie? Right? Ek kan nie, ek kan nie vir die Heere een gedeelte gee, dan wil ek breek, ek het gegeen nie. If I don't give the total, I haven't give anything. Something has to be acceptable to God so that it can be reckoned before God. So that He that can unfar. Ek hoor ek hulle sê nou, weet jy die system en nou hier gewis het? Ja, die system en nie hier gewis het, jy moet hier gewis het. Right, right. And do not be, do not be, conformed to to the patterns of this age, said I, to the pattern of this world. Now this is something that the church really need. We have spoken there at the back. You know how many of the church people are following the trends of the world? And there's nothing, and they see nothing wrong with it. Ons wil in elke fashion wees. Ons wil alles doen wat die wereld vir ons wees om te doen. En in dit dat ons al hierdie goed doen, in doing all these things, we have to succumb to what the world predicts. And we haven't become trendsetters. But we have become followers of everything that the world gives to us. And we have be- and we have now brought those things of the world into the church and we have now accepted it and think it is holy. We have, we have brought the, the defiled things of the world into the church. Whereas we are supposed to be the trendsetters in the world. We are supposed to have our own designers in church. We're supposed to have our own people that can set the example in every sphere of life. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. That is one thing that we are talking about. Uh, uh, and wanneer ons, ons van hierdie goed praat, dan, dan praat het van, van onze kleren draag. Ek, ek dink dat is baie belangrijk dat ons hier oor praat. We have to be careful how we come to the house of God. We have to be dressed decently. Woman has to be dressed decently. I know how many times my wife was a <coughs> social worker in, 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 in Muscle Bay and there were many times that she had to go to court uh, with children because of um, rape and all these things. And I remember one of the cases that, that she was involved with uh, where the judge threw the case out because the man said, but the way she was dressed made me do what she, she was, she was actually asking me to do it. And the judge accepted this argument I mean, you can say, ah, maar hoe kan hy dit? Ek kan ons dra wat ek wil. 
But we have to be presentable. We are from another level. We are from another people. We are from another tribe. We are from another class. We are a better people. We are the sons of God. And because we are of that higher level and standard of living, we are to be the example, the models for the earth. The, the earth and the world has to look on us. Remember what Peter and John said to the man, look on us. And the world has to look on us to see the way, not only that we are dressed, but the way that we are walking, the way that we are conducting ourselves, our way and manner of living should be of a standard that is higher than the world. Now it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We have to get a different way of thinking. We have to get a different mentality on us. We have, to, we have to think every day. We have to think differently, differently to the world. We don't have to stand up to, to the way the world is standing up, but the way we approach things has to be different. Right? But, but, but the way we approach things are different because we have a higher level of living a higher way of communicating. We have someone that we can talk to. We have our God on our side. We uh, to, uh, renew our minds so that we may discern what is good and pleasing and the perfect will of God for our lives. Ons gaan daar eindig vanavond.